Well, greetings, everyone. Welcome back to the Backyard Tabletop. My name is Jacob. My name's Curtis. That's Curtis over there, definitely. Curtis is growing out his hair. He just told me, like, right before we started rolling here. It's getting a little, it's getting a little, woo, in the back. Cur- but... Curtis said he's doing the Beauregard cut. Yeah, the Beauregard cut. He, you're embracing the monk. Uh-huh. You're, yep. you're embracing the monk life. Yeah. Monk why life. is that, Curtis? Why, why are you embracing the monk life? Are you trying to get me to do a segue? Maybe. Maybe. We're not even doing an intro today. We're just jumping right <laughs> <laughs> just well, just like, hey, Jacob, I'm Jacob, segue. <laughs> well, Jacob, here on the Backyard Tabletop, we both have been playing a little bit of Baldur's Gate 3. We have. A new just, game from Larian Studios. Yeah, that's based all based D&D on. 5e. And it's it's been absolutely amazing. I don't know about you, Curtis. I'm I'm loving the game. And if it wasn't obvious, I, I, I'm, I'm playing a monk. Yeah. That's, that's why I'm... <laughs> In the monk mood. Yep, yep. Curtis is in the monk mood. Uh, he he's doing a a, a monk rogue combo. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a ninja. I'm gonna be ninja. Uh, a shadow monk mixed with I don't really know what yet. I'm thinking probably thief mm. because in Baldur's Gate three, thief gives you an extra bonus action, which Two is bonus awesome. Actions. So uh, you see, I I am going rogue, and I went thief. Uh, it is it is absolutely fantastic, and I'm literally playing this game like, oh man, on my second playthrough, this might be really hard to not have a bonus act, <laughs> two bonus actions, yeah. Because I I'm loving the fact I can dash and hide and all all as yeah, a bonus man. action in the same turn. It's it's great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I yeah. Being being a rogue has been really fun. I might go assassin just because sneaking and actually like getting the drop on your enemies is pretty easy and not not yeah. like easy easy but it's like it feels a little more doable to me than it does like in our actual tabletop games yeah yeah um so assassin feels a little bit more like worthwhile you know cuz mm-hmm. it's pretty easy to get the drop on peeps oh yeah so. and then having that high dexterity to be able to you know you can basically get your surprise in and then roll like on on my rogue i've been like there's been only a handful of times that i haven't been in the top three uh of initiative just because of that high dexterity it's really yeah i'm almost always first yeah (laughs) yeah i I don't i don't know about you curtis but like this game has really just kind of unlocked the like feeling like a kid again it's been a long time since I've like was looking forward to a game. Like I was trying to think it it was probably Dragon Age Inquisition was the last game I remember like being really yeah. excited for. Yeah, for sure. And like I think even me, before it, that for me it was like oh, the yeah. Mass Effect remaster which doesn't really count cuz it was just a, <laughs> a a re-release but yeah. I was so you, excited you love for those that. Games. Yeah. You love those games. And yeah, like e- even before that with me, like I was following the crap out of Star Wars The Old Republic MMO, like watching all the behind the scenes of it and all the developers talk about it and the writers talk about it, et cetera, et cetera. I was basically doing that for Larry and like I was watching a lot of the panels from Hells and just being so excited for this game. And so when it finally dropped, I, I was just like been been play like sarah's been playing on her fancy dancy computer she has a much better than computer than i do and it's been so that i to helped just her build look over and, no big deal yes yeah <laughs> curtis is for hire if you all want to com- i mean i guess build. sure yeah, yeah. Re- reach out to us <laughs> 65 an hour no it's <laughs> <laughs> you, you got it it's like in that opening email got to say you're right <laughs> uh yes so i've i've been loving this game i haven't uh, i think you said uh that you might be 10 hours in we're a little we're over 10 that yep we're finding we're right about in the same story so far like not giving any spoilers here but like first impressions uh so good i i'm yep. i'm almost level four um i'm loving it like it, so i i played the early access Mm-hmm. Um, with you a couple times even, yeah, um, yeah. But it was still, it just still felt so unfinished to me that I kind of was like, okay, I'm gonna stop following this. I'm gonna stop playing this. I'm gonna let it 
let it get better and better and better and I'll kind of wait till release until I play it again. And I'm really yeah. glad I did because the the like huge difference between uh where I played which was like probably a year to a year and a half ago in early uh -huh. access and mm -hmm. now with full release is huge. Huge, huge. difference. Yeah. It's way better. Way mm -hmm. way way better. Um, and yeah. so it's actually been keeping my interest, which is what I was worried about was that I would be like, I've done all this before already. Um, but it's definitely yeah. not. Um, and I think yeah. the main reason behind that is like fully making a character and kind of committing to the role play of the character. Exactly. Um, that's, yeah. that's what I've been really feeling. And just like you, I, I was, I was playing early access. I was playing longer than you. I, I was really actually kind of enjoying early access mainly for me, the reason why I stuck to it is I have never really played the, um, I'm blanking on the actual name of the genre, but the clicking game where you're CR clicking CRPG. your character to move. Yeah, CRPG, CRPG. thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I I've, have never really been into those games. Uh, like the, yeah, I, I had a hard time. Like the like original Fallout the, and all the other yeah, Baldur's Gate games. And ex exactly. All the other Larian games, yeah. Yeah. That hasn't really been me, but I've loved role playing games. So I I really wanted to just get used to that before the actual game kind of came out. Um, <clears throat> so that's why I kind of stuck with it to try and get the feel for it because I, I just really have this disconnect when that happens. Um, but the 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 amount that is different from playing early access to to Huge this has just been like even like the textures of everything are just mm -hmm. immensely better. The atmosphere is like like. Going into the dungeons, I was kind of like taken aback because of how dark everything was. But mm -hmm. like, and you know, I did set my I did set my screen up correctly, just so you know. But it's like it felt more immersive. Like yeah. the darkness was more like encroaching, and it, it, like well, the, what, the need for a torch was m much was more say, what, beneficial. What race, are you, what race are you playing? So, so I am a half elf, um, okay. but you know, so they do get dark vision. But even just the difference of like. You know, when you switch to Gale, one of your party members, and right, him exactly. being a human and having to yeah, if you get in a, a fight in a cave, Gale's screwed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he can't see stuff like that. It's just spells. yeah, really nice. And so, so th it's just been really cool to also see how they did, like how they converted Five E into a video game sense because they have changed a few like. For the most yeah. part, this is pretty on par with 5e, but there are a few things different, like you said, you, Thief getting an extra bonus action. Sure. You know. You can you can definitely come into it with like builds that you've already that you already know are good in 5e mm -hmm. and they will work great here. Um but there are some things like Monk and Ranger that Larian was like, we're going to bump these a little bit because we feel like we can streamline it and make it feel yeah. better. Uh, video game wise and um, just a bunch of other stuff like like one of the one of the biggest things for me is there's no uh, there's no rule against casting multiple leveled spells in a turn anymore yeah if you've yeah. got if you've got a first level bonus action spell and a first level action spell you can cast both of them in one turn mm -hmm. um, so it's it takes not, you back to the early days of critical role yeah yeah so yeah. Um, they did a couple of just some different things like that to to kind of streamline the gameplay mm -hmm. and um help you feel a little more powerful and make it more interesting and yeah um uh, yeah just, well and just the enemies of... also feel a little bit more powerful exactly. doing stuff like that too you know yeah exactly for sure like e even like little stuff like shove being a bonus action you yep. know being yep. able Shoving, to like you can potentially just... push yeah. someone away so you instead of using an action to disengage you could push them and then run away type of thing. Yeah, so, you can just, come into it just based off of your 5e knowledge and do pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of things that you're going to be missing out on and a lot of opportunities and different styles of play you'll be missing out on if you just kind of ignore uh, the new things Larian has introduced, which are very yeah. good all in my opinion. It's, it's all very yeah. good introductions. And I wouldn't want them to like adopt all of these things to 5e necessarily. Mm -hmm. Like, like I'm not going to make my, uh, you know, new homebrew 5e rule set be the Larian rule set. <laughs> um, 
But there's definitely some things in there. I mean, they made potions a bonus action, which everybody does already anyway. Yeah, exactly. Um, just some exactly. stuff like that, that it's like, it's just streamlining and making things simpler and, and easier to play in real time. Yeah, e even being able to throw a health potion and have it yes. break and, mm -hmm. and being able to heal two people is kind of yeah. fun. Yeah. Uh, like, that's, Actually, that's kind of a fun idea. You know, something I saw today, this is crazy, Jake. This is going to blow your mind. <laughs> there's there's a thing that people are doing where you can pull a potion, potion of speed, potion of speak with animals, potion of whatever, out of your okay. pack, drop uh -huh. it on the ground, and have everybody gather around it, and then somebody hits it with their sword, and it pops, <laughs> and everybody gets the potion. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Just, just little things so... like that. You know, it's like you could go your whole game never knowing that that could even work. Uh, if all you're doing is basing everything on 5e. But it, but if you think That's, about it in the game rules, it makes perfect it, sense. It works, yeah. I love that. That's amazing. Oh, man, now yeah, I'm going to go try great. that. It's great. The, just the ability uh, that you have to, like, grab boxes and move them in the middle of combat, drop stuff mm -hmm. on people, set traps. Yeah. There's another... There's another uh, there's another strat that's going around right now called the cat bomb, which is where um, you set a trap <laughs> in the middle of the road, you know, whether it's okay. like you're, you stack yeah. up six explosive barrels or whatever. Yes, And you have classic. somebody use like summon animals and summon a cat because cats <laughs> okay. in Baldur's Gate 3 have an ability called meow. And it's basically, it's, yeah. it's basically a thing that makes all other cats creatures go like huh what's that and go over to the cat <laughs> so yeah. there's these people that are like going through the whole the little town that we were talking about going through the whole town okay. just meowing with this cat luring <laughs> like 12 dudes at once all to this little thing in the road and then hitting turn base <laughs> mode and the cat books it out of there and there's 12 dudes wrapped around this stack of eight explosive barrels and somebody just tosses a fire oh, bolt in there no. and everybody dies instantly it's so good so funny i the cat bomb. i did i i that's amazing like you heard it here folks uh i i did see a, a short clip video of it was actually Ma matthew mercer playing and uh Sten, the game developer was watching it i don't know if you saw this where he stacked the boxes <laughs> i did um Super, super high and was able to uh, shoot at a guard that was on like a Get wall a of some wall. kind. He didn't just shoot yep. at the guard. He, ha he had an arrow of transportation, which is apparently <laughs> oh, an item that's that you can what it get, was. which is if okay. you shoot the arrow, you teleport to wherever it lands. That's incredible. So he got all the way up on like 80 boxes to get to the top of this castle wall. And then shot this arrow of transportation onto the wall so that he teleported <sighs> it over to. <laughs> there you go. It, it, absolutely because, amazing. And I because think I'm just here for these shenanigans. Sven had uh, uh, asked him to like infiltrate this castle or whatever, or get over the wall. And Matt okay. was like, "Okay, I can do that. Sure, easy." <laughs> <laughs> and they they ended up saying, so "Like good. these these are the kinds of solutions you get when you're a." <laughs> when you're a 10 year D and D veteran. <laughs> oh man. And a Baldur's gate, apparently veteran Matt, I know has been playing for years. Yeah, for sure. That's so good. That's so good. Oh man. Yes. So I don't know, you know, thumbs up, two thumbs up here from the backyard tabletop. We, it's we good. love this game. It's critically acclaimed. You, it's very yeah, good. It, it's it, the re reviews are in and everyone seems to be loving it. So if you like D and D you'll love it. Mm -hmm. Honestly, you know, this was going to be the last, like, last kind of question. Are there any complaints that you wish were com were uh, something addressed? Because honestly, like for me, it was like Larian's been really on point with the the patches. They've been pretty quick with patches for like bugs and stuff like that. I I I know the arc. I think there's a couple cantrips I wish were in the game. I like like booming blade and and green flame blade kind of really diminishes the like because i was i was potentially going to go arcane trickster but a few cantrips that weren't available kind of really makes arcane trickster kind of mm -hmm. eh, compared like because it's it's a 
Arcane Trickster is an amazing subclass in the tabletop. In the game, yeah. In the game, eh, in the game, it's almost you know, the weaker of the two, actually, of the three. Exactly. I mean. Yeah. So it I was think, just kind of like there's. My main complaint is one that's going to be addressed already that they have said, and it's that hmm. there's a there's a slight lack for choice. It feels like, uh, at least okay. as far as general D and D goes, you know. I mean, there's only. This is go- this is gonna sound like what do you mean? That's so much choice. <laughs> but when you're talking about what we're used to with Five E and the amount of choice we have in the game, like the fact that yeah. there's only technically like seven classes mm, uh, or yeah. races, I mean, uh, like seven races, because yeah, there's like half elf and there's all the different subclasses of half elves and elves and things, but they cut ca- they count yeah. drow as a separate race. That's not really how that works. Um, yeah. All that kind of stuff. The races feel a little bit kind of diminished. You know, the, yeah. the choice of subclass once you get into your class feels a little bit eh. Um, yeah. Okay. Just coming from a 5e perspective. But they have already said they are planning updates in the future where they will add more subclasses, probably oh, very more cool. races, okay. all that kind of stuff. So Very um, cool. Well, I'm, I'm looking yeah. forward to that. I think, okay, so... I guess last thing we'll talk about is there any subclass you're hoping gets put in the game? Um, because I I already know my answer. If anything, for me, it would either be um Rogue Phantom mm. or Warlock Hexblade. I like it because like Hexblade's it. not in the game. It kind of is yeah. like they they bumped up the the pack the, of the blade, yeah, the pack of the blade a little bit, so it feels more like just hexblade. Um, but you don't get all the other cool stuff that hexblade gets, so like yeah. hexblade's curse and stuff. So yeah, mm. my my class my subclass I hope they put in the game is uh, swashbuckler. I think that's my favorite rogue subclass, and so mm. I mean I, I I feel like they I mean because the I think it's called rakish or da- um, rakish, rakish audacity. Yes, where it's like if you attack a creature, you've automatically disengaged mm-hmm. from it. You kind of can already do that with Thief because you get an extra bonus action. You know, yeah, the, so the, I, I don't... The, I, I'm, the, the ability to play a little bit loner where because the thing I'm having trouble with on Rogue right now is getting my sneak attacks actually in. Um, yeah, yeah. So being able to play a little bit more loner as a Rogue and still get your sneak attack would be huge. Would be really nice, yeah. 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 So anyway, I hope I hope to see that maybe in the future. I, and I also know Heck mods yeah, are going to go absolutely cr- crazy oh, with this dude. game. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. Larian has already said they're going to support all the mods. So that's so super fun. Final thing, Jake. Yeah, who's your who? Who you got those hard eyes for? Huh? Oh, who you got those hard eyes here for? here we go. Who? We, oh yeah, yeah. Thank you for bringing this up because <clears throat> I really want Curtis to do a voiceover of. A really romantic, romantic voice of who he is, romancing. Um, uh, maybe I'll bring in some music again. <laughs> for me, it's Shadow Heart. I, I know a, a lot of people might be going for that. Shadow Shadow Heart is to Baldur's Gate three as Liara is to Mass Effect. <laughs> I feel like it's the that's thing a, everyone picks one. first. Yep. And it's good because it's a great, it's going to be, a, I mean, I don't know yet, but I assume it's going to be a great romance. Yeah. But then once you're like three playthroughs through, you're like, oh, this other character was way better <laughs> kind of a thing. Yeah. Oh, like, no. I, like now, I now think... like everybody who likes Mass Effect likes the Liara romance. Mm-hmm. Everybody who's yeah. played Mass Effect eight times through is like tallies where it's at. Okay, <laughs> my my first romance was Tally in yeah. that game. Just so you know, I just want to put okay. that out there All for right. her. Well, you've got <laughs> no, that's taste. great. No, I, I, I love it. <laughs> uh, Shadowheart just seems so interesting, and I I've been so curious about her her backstory for a while now, and how she's tied. You know, not going into spoilers, she's tied to cert, She has certain things that are certain tied to cleric. She's stuff. a cleric. Um, she's cleric. Um, I really I really like. I really like the secrets. I think they they're doing the the secret. 
it honestly feels like a D&D game where everyone is sitting around the table and they're all like, can I do an insight check on such and such? Yes. What, what was that? It's like <laughs> every character seems to be doing yeah. that. It's like every time Gale starts turning up like his, his charm, you're just like, I want to do an insight check. What yep. are you talking about? Oh, man. <laughs> it absolutely feels like a real D&D table where everybody's got their little secret. Uh, that they just they really want to get out, but they've yeah. got to play the long game. It's good. Um, it's good. Yeah, it's great. Very fun. Yeah, yeah, Shadow, so, the mystery of Shadowheart is very, very intriguing. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, she she feels a little too kind of milk toasty to me. I don't know if that okay makes sense. It's, it's like because because she's been advertised so much. Probably is what you're yes, thinking, right. She's I, like kind of been almost probably it. part of the the main five or so. And it and it just know. feels like the the common romance, which is like you know, this person's a mystery and I need to get to the bottom of that mystery. And, oh, I've never trusted anybody like you before. And now I finally mm-hmm. have somebody I can trust and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. That kind of thing. It's, it's so good. Um, it's which so is good. great. My character. I mean, there's there's my, a reason there's always a companion like that in every yeah, game. Yep. Yeah. And, and my character's backstory is an urchin. So it, it just makes a lot of sense. I think Shadowheart's backstory is actually an urchin as well. I could be incorrect on that. But anyway. Yeah. So what about you, Curtis? Don't you? judge me, Jake. Um, I'm not judging. I ain't judging. Why don't, here. Why don't you guess? Actually, I I think I have to. I think right off the bat, first thing, because I was actually in the back of my mind, I was thinking about this. I, I think I think you're going Carlac. I I am going Carlac. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay. The okay. Main, the okay. main reason is Shadowheart's awesome, but but yeah. I kind of no, want to totally have like a an intellectual relationship with Shadowheart, if that makes sense, with the way my okay. character is. My character's a sage background. They're a monk. Okay. Uh, they come from dark pasts and things like that. And I think I want them to have more of a like we get each other on this level kind of relationship with Shadowheart, not like a romantic right. relationship. But mm. Carlac, just from the little I've <laughs> played with, again, I've just recently gotten Carlac into my party. Okay. Um, Carlac seems so like innocent in a weird, like in kind of a weird way. Like she's a freaking hardened warrior who's fought on the plains of the hells for years. Yeah. But all she wants is to be like. A housewife. <laughs> she just wants a little house with a nice backyard yeah. and to just relax for the rest of her life. And I'm like, that's such a cool that's dynamic. Such, that's so it's very freaking cute. But you're a giant red devil at the same time. <laughs> with, with like this thing in your chest. Yeah, it's oh, so cool. I love oh, it. Oh, man. No, I totally get it. And the way she is, um, just like the the love she has for life. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. just like, and and how much of a joy she has of being finally being free and how much she wants to keep that. It's it's like really one interesting. Of the, one of the first convers I don't want to spoil all that much, but one of the first conversations I had with her, um, she was like, what do you think you'll do once this is all done with? Or, mm-hmm. uh, or no, it uh or no she said where would you be right now if you hadn't gotten uh pulled onto the ship kind of a thing because yeah. she was just talking about how she got in this situation she was, she was like where would you be right now if it weren't for that ship and he was like uh, uh my character ko was like probably back in my home relaxing and just reading the day away uh and it mm. was one of the like baldurian backgrounds you could you could pick uh, uh okay, through, okay. through the uh through the choices there and she was like oh that sounds amazing <laughs> like what a life that sounds fantastic and i was like yeah okay i like okay. you <laughs> she's fun she's yeah, fun that's great well thank you so much curtis for talking about Baldur's Gate 3 with me. We would love to know if you guys have any fun stories you'd like to share in the comments. Uh, if if you are not very far, maybe, you know, don't spoil anything for us. Or if you no are further spoilers. than us, please don't spoil it. Please don't spoil in the comments. Uh, but if you have a fun interaction you have with the character, who you're romancing, what character classes you're going for, we would love to hear it down in the comments below. 
Um, and I realized that I didn't even really do an intro. Backyard Tabletop is, is all about talking about the game, the, the tabletop game that Curtis and I are in. Uh, or Curtis is in one, I'm in a different one. Uh, and at this point, we're gonna leap back into what's been going on with the witch's omen. You know, you know uh, what I just, you know what I just realized we did, Jake. What's that? What's that? We just did a Baldur's Gate three watch. Yeah, we <laughs> basically that's what we did. <laughs> if you listen to the McElroy brothers, uh, my brother and my brother and me, every once in a while they'll have an episode where they're like, "This thing is happening and it's insane," and, and they'll just talk about it for half of the show, and then they'll go like, "Oh, but yeah, anyway, sorry, this is a." This is a podcast about answering questions. <laughs> uh, yeah, they... <laughs> it's like, oh, is it? I thought it was a movie <laughs> podcast because you've Go, been talking yeah, about this yeah, movie for yeah, forty from... minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we totally did that, you know, because we we we're trying to limit the the intros to like so yeah. we can talk a little bit more about the story. <laughs> but I, we hey. the, Baldur's Gate three just just launched. You do and what we you are, gotta I do. Think we're just. We're feeling like kids. I don't know right now. If, I'm, I'm if, loving. If there's one thing Baldur's Gate Three is good at, it's getting you sucked up into a time hole where you spend way more time than you thought you were going to on it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> well, on that note, everyone, I think we're gonna get into. Uh, if that's okay, Curtis, I think we're just gonna hop right into what's been going on with the Witch's what? Almond. Let's hot the witch's almond. Did I really do it again? Did the I... witch's almond. The witch's almond again. <laughs> the witch's, the witch's omen. Omen, Is that right? The witch's omen. 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 Like amen. amen. But yeah, yeah but with, with an, an o. o. <laughs> yep. Omen. Yes. Oh man. Yes. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> the witch's omen. <laughs> Well, last we left off, Curtis, if you recall. I don't. We had uh, found the dancing hut. And um, the the dancing hut was corralled in this little uh, makeshift marketplace. Or it wasn't makeshift. It was surrounded by a wall of thorns in the marketplace. And um, we had just killed uh, Nizana. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. The white witch. The White Witch. I mean, yeah. <laughs> she was the uh, the. You killed uh, the White Witch, uh, and now you're going into the wardrobe. I'm 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 yes. here. I'm here. Wow. <laughs> Twenty five years later, we came out of the wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So we we found the dancing hut, and but also right outside were the the remains of the other two riders. Uh, because the yes, black writers, which the one was that a gave huge, us... huge deal. That's crazy. Yeah, huge deal, huge deal. So we we know all the writers are are dead now. So we're basically it. There were, we're only Baba three? Yaga's there last. Were only hope. three or were there four? Th- there was three. There were there only three. three. There was four of as far us. As you know, um, as, as far as we know, I mean, that's how the forward. legend goes. And I mean, there. I mean, there's unless all seasons. the legends have been. Oh, but they they weren't seasons. They were times of day, right? They were they were night, dawn, and midday. Yes, yes. They were they were more about that. That seems to be a very common theme in uh, a Baba Yaga, like nighttime, twilight, and dawn, right? Right. Because uh, we we learned that from uh from uh from some ravens we're gonna meet today. But yeah, so we we found the dancing hut. We went in. That we explored a little bit, but we put in the keys that we had, which was a frost giant beard and um, a, 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 a plague mask, a doctor's plague mask, uh, oh, and it yeah. teleported us. I remember you saying that because that's yeah, that was a big thing in in my campaign right now is plague masks. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It, it's, oh yeah, because the plague's going on. Um, so we teleported away and we came to a, the, everything around us shifted in the hut. And so we're still in the hut, but everything around us is very different. And, uh, we started to explore this new area. And so we came across, we came across this in, in kind of, um, a roundabout, you know, we basically were exploring and we learned that basically these halls just kind of loop. There's like a, tr- there's like a triangle that's going on in, through these halls. So we kind of, at the end of one triangle is a door. At the end of one triangle is a door. So it's kind of like every corner is a door. Type okay. Of thing. So there's like three doors. Um, when we go into the first door, there is the... Uh, so I did uh, dip, Dip's notes. 
it is it is pronounced um iberia iberia it's like the siberia but without the s yeah correct correct yes um so it's pronounced that so these are these witch symbols uh from iberia so they're iberian symbols did you find uh, the first one no, no, no huskies. Actually, there like, were there you know, were <laughs> like Siber- Siberian huskies. I, yeah, Iberian. yeah, no, no, no huskies. That would have right. been that would have been kind of that would have been a nice little change of pace. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, because <laughs> every every time we come into the con- contact of anyone that's with Baba Yaga is just you ma- so. As- <laughs> Can you imagine just walking into that room and the game's like expecting you to have speak with animals on. But you don't have speak with animals on, and so you just hear yus- husky screams <laughs> from every corner of the room, and just ah, <laughs> ah. <laughs> just, just, and then there's like one looking with the the husky side yeah. eye, yeah. <laughs> laying on the couch. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, so we we came to the first one, and the the first one do 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 uh, was the. Symbol of dawn, I believe. Dawn. Uh, yes, dawn. And in there, there was a raven that we talked to. If you, if you remember, there was a pool of water. And uh, out, shoot, we kind of saw, when we looked inside the water, there, was a, there wasn't a reflection of the room. It actually looked like dawn. It was kind of a silhouette. And flying at us was a raven. And it came shooting up out of the pool, landed, and we conversed with it. And... Dara had to kind of convince it to help us in a sense. I remember making some persuasions checks here. We learned that um, there is a tale of um, three ra- uh, three ravens that are kind of like these seer- these uh, prophets of Baba Yaga. They are known as the liar seers. I I I I mispronounced it and dip correct me. So another little dip note: it's not the lit the layer seers. It's the liar seers. As in uh, and L-I-A-R I guess this is... or L-Y? Yes. Okay. Um, yes. Interesting. So that that's how that's pronounced. But there are three of them, and they're kind of a... They kind of give the... They, they help, but they give these roundabout riddles, and they often, requ- you know, request dire things from people. They're, they're, you know, they're the classic Baba Yaga tales. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so we, it basically agrees to help us. Um, and it tells us that in the, in the next room, we have to go figure out, um, what, what to do in the next room. And we learn that we basically are going to be taking on three trials because there's three ravens. They're in this place and we have to take on three trials in order to, uh, get the blessings of these ravens. The first and the, one and the, is and, well, and and what's the point of getting the blessings of the ravens just so you can leave so, the hut? W- so we can leave the hut, but also figure out what to do next because we we oh. use the keys, but we are we are kind of like we don't know where to go from here. We, is Got Baba it. Yaga here? Is because we don't really, I think, still to this so, point, we don't really know. Like we don't know where Bear, Baba Yaga is. Like the right. The writers haven't, you know, the writers were killed. They haven't ushered in Baba Yaga's return. Mm-hmm. Uh, the dancing hut is, not, but Baba Yaga doesn't have her hut because it was chained up. So, Stuff so like you're that. Ju- you're just trying to kind of, you're you're doing some trials in order to prove that you can handle what's coming, and then and you're then they'll right. tell you I, what I to do next. I guess it's kind of ca- a thing. You know, it's one. Of, it really is one of those things that we're kind of like we're, you know. We have to kind of convince everyone that we're here to help Baba Yaga, but in also well, kind of a roundabout way, it's kind of like like it, it wouldn't it, obviously it wouldn't be a D and D campaign if everyone was just going to be like, okay, here you go, <laughs> like well, on to the but, next well, place. But but I mean, with somebody with as many enemies as as Baba Yaga has, yeah, you got to make sure yeah, that, somebody's actually trying to help you and not just find you and kill you. You know, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so we kind of we we basically say it's like okay, so we're we're essentially supposed to go into the next room and find out what um, the creature wants. 
It's very kind of vague. And and to be fair, this was a while ago, so I'm also trying to to remember everything. But it's, from what what I remember, we're supposed to try and go into the next room and figure out what it wants and bring the answer back to the Raven. Uh, and this is going to be the the trial of endurance. Was this one? Um, and so in in here we kind of walk in and we see a bedroom and on the bed if i remember correctly was a a bloody mess kind of like the sheets were all bloody and in the corner was a ghost of a woman and i believe saurian our wizard had to do some maybe history checks or, or we were conversing we we were able to converse a little bit with the ghost we from what I remember, this was the 13th daughter of Baba Yaga. The current daughter is the 14th that's on the throne. That's Elvana. Okay. Um, so from what I remember, uh, this was actually the sister of the current queen. Um, and we're kind of like conversing. And we, we kind of like... We we were trying to figure it out. It was really rough. We were trying to converse and exp- like we were asking questions like, "Are you where? Do you want like us to get back at Elvana? Maybe that's what you want. Do you want revenge?" Um, and it was kind of we we kind of came to the conclusion that we were able to figure out from kind of talking with her, but she was getting really frustrated, um, and, and with every question that we got wrong, she was getting more and more aggressive. So she wound up attacking us. Uh, so we we kind of wound up killing her, but from what do. I remember in in my notes, <laughs> we we kind of learned that she was out for revenge against Baba Yaga. Okay. Um. So that's what we brought back to the Raven, and uh, the Raven was like, "Okay, yes, you did it." And the <laughs> thank you, it wasn't that kind to us, uh, but it gave us an amulet, and on the amulet. And I'm was head. carved the word um, Ar- um, Artoza, Artroza. And we were like, what does that mean? Our wizard did an, a history check, and it essentially means um, the three who watch. It is a trio of huge carved figures. Oh. Um, so I was like, okay, interesting, cool. So that's a little bit of a clue of, of what's to come. This is also when the raven told us, seek now the sisters three who are one, mother, maiden, crone, Uh, but know that the maiden is elusive and can only be caught under the waxing moon. So that's some riddle-like clues. We get this this amulet that's kind of showing us the three who watch and these trio of of, uh, three huge carved creatures, and then potentially we're supposed to seek maybe a maiden under a waxing moon. When is a good poem, you got to snap. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because that's poem. like, you know, instead yep, of... good poem. Instead yep. of... Uh, we don't, we don't, to we don't golf here. clap here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so we did that. That was very... That was kind of like, wow, okay, that was elusive. Let's, cool. let's continue on. And so we go to the next door. And on this one is the eerie... Uh, the... Uh, Iberian symbol of twilight. Um, And we learn a little bit later that this was the trial of strength. The raven in here uh, kind of explained who we are. Yeah, that's kind of like, I think we actually had to do a strength check to open this door too, if I remember. There was some sort of strength check that required to get in here, which uh, Zav was all for this. Our barbarian was like, yeah, we can do that. Okay, finally something I can do with all these stupid riddles. (laughs) There's there's nothing a little, maybe a little bit more frustrating than having a lot of riddles and you're trying to stay in character with a negative one intelligence. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, but yeah, so this raven tells us, um, go basically the same thing. Go into the next room and bring me back the answer. Uh, and it tells us, born twins live not, yet grow until death. Fates often tied, uh, ever crescent as the moon, symbols of the warrior's pride. So we go into the next room, uh, and out comes charging at us a giant boar. 
Okay. So with the riddle I just told you, any guesses on what might be the answer to this little clue? Say the say the riddle one more time. Well, it was a uh, uh, <clears throat> born twins, twins. Born twins live not live yet not. grow until death. Fates often tied, ever crescent as the moon. Symbols born, of the warrior's pride. Born twins live not yet grow until died. Until death. Until death. Then what was the next part? Fates often tied, ever crescent as the moon. Fates often hide? Tied. Fates, Fates often tie, like, tied. Tied. Oh, like tied, tied together. Got it, got it, yes. got it. Crescent as the moon. Crescent as the moon. And then a giant boar comes charging at us. You need a boar's tusk. Correct. That is the answer that we had to bring. <laughs> so, yes, we fought and killed the boar. And we have a fighter and a barbarian that um, cut off. One of the tusks, we may actually still have the other one too. I'm we smart. We brought back that to the raven. Yep, you did it. Well done. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, so that that was the thing we brought back to this raven. Uh, so we we completed the trial of strength. It was kind of the most straightforward one, which was yeah, really nice. Yeah, for sure. That's great. <laughs> so yep, it was a tusk. And then this raven gave us an amulet of a dragon on it. So the amulet and it had a dragon on it. Cool. Uh, and then the uh, the uh, phrase that it told us was, "Look for it." Um, oops, sorry. Uh, Look for it where time catches up to us all. And then it followed it up with, "Look for the mother when the moon is full." So, another kind of uh, roundabout clues and things like that, and. This is kind of looking back on hindsight, because when we were doing this, we had literally no idea what was really going on. But right. what these were what these were alluding to were kind of the next keys that we needed for the cauldron. Got it. So um, it was kind of like the first the first raven kind of gave us um, a clue of where we need to seek the uh, keys. And then this one was supposed to be a little bit of a clue of the next um key that we're supposed to find and it's supposed to be some something related to a dragon got it uh is kind of the clue and then and look for it where the time catches up well so looking for it where time look for look for the key where time catches up to us all so that's got a little bit of the clue and as of right now again this was also something that dip kind of explained to us like guys make sure to take notes because right now it's probably not going to make sense but it will in time so right. we'll get there in our okay. uh, in our uh, adventure forth. But yes, yeah, so it's like secrets. Yeah, riddles, weird clues, and then uh, look for the mother where the moon is. Uh, look for the mother when the moon is full. So that's kind of correlating back to um, look for the uh, the maiden is elusive, can only be caught under the waxing moon. Right. So you know. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Then we came to the third door, uh, and this one had the uh, the sim the the Ibro um, the, um, Iberian symbol Iberian. for night. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and this was going to be the trial of wit. This raven was a awful, hideous-looking raven, and it was an albino one. So Ooh. it was kind of uh, interesting. This one was just a little different. And this one told us. Um, that we have to go into the uh, next room and figure out the answer. Um, and what it basically told us was, I mark night's coming, I will mark your end. I run not in fear, and I have not a friend. So then we have to go into the next room, figure out what the answer was, and then come back with the answer. In the next room, essentially we kind of walk in and there's a small little path that leads to like an an alcove not an alcove like a like a little patio if you will and it was surrounded by water so it's kind of like a small little like walkway bridge if you will that kind of ends with a circle mm -hmm. and then it's, we're surrounded by water and in the little circle in the center of the room there were a bunch of chalices oh uh, 
It's like Indiana Jones. So it was uh, a little bit of uh, some some uh, stuff going on here. <laughs> um, and then kind of like uh, w- around us in the room, so actually on the walls and in the room, c- like if you were to kind of draw a line, there were five alcoves and they all lined up with the five chalices. So it's kind of like a chalice here lined up with an alcove that was on the wall. Got it. A chalice okay. here lined up with a okay. alcove on the wall. Um, <clears throat> let me see if I can find where we put the... Uh, w- there were little symbols on the chalices... And on one of the on one of the chalices, it was a mirror. On the next one was an apple. The next one was an hourglass. And then, um, if I pronounce this correctly, a a anthem, a t h a m e, which is essentially a ritual a dagger. A theme. A theme. A theme. A theme. I think that's correct. I, I didn't know what it was. That I had to look this up, and Sarah was like, "I, I think this is think, what it is." I think um, it's a theme. A theme. A theme. That makes sense. A, a theme. Um, it's it's a, a ritual dagger. It's kind of the name for a ritual dagger. And then the last one had a symbol of a key on it. So we kind of had to use what the uh, raven told us previously. I mark uh, night's coming. I will mark your end. I run not in fear and I have not a friend. So hmm. of all those ones, we were kind of like it could be time and the one associated with that is an hourglass so that's the one that we kind of guessed so on that one that had the a symbol of a on the chalice the hourglass symbol Xavier was the one that braved it uh and took a drink from the chalice each one of them had were filled about halfway with with a deep red wine when Xavier oh, okay. drank of the wine, there were three stone pathways that led to the alcove that was lined up to it. He ventured over to the alcove, and the moment that he reached the alcove, suddenly we could not see Xavier, but he could actually still see us, so we kind of lost track of him. Uh, but in there was the uh, hourglass, so he kind of found the item there, and so he picked that up, and then we went and took it back to the raven. Okay. And we were correct. (laughs) So I guess the answer to that riddle was... (laughs) Pause for effect. Yeah, pause for effect. So we were correct. And then this is when uh, the uh, raven told us, You have taken a great burden upon yourselves. What you seek, the changeling holds. You will find the crone only when the moon wanes. So, uh, yeah. So that's kind of we didn't the really. Changeling. Um, that's interesting, because I I know in um, I know in Pathfinder lore, changelings aren't what changelings are in in D and D lore. Um, Correct. In, in Pathfinder, a changeling is the the daughter or child of a hag. Correct. Correct. That's interesting. So that's okay. what's that's what's really that's that's interesting. So that was that's a big clue for sure for us to kind of know something like that. So that's kind of like where where we got to. So those were kind of the three clues from the ravens. Um, so we kind of have ideas of we need to find apparently the three who watch which is um if you remember back to the first raven giving us um seek now the sisters three yeah the mother maiden crone so that's kind of like we know we we kind of were assuming kind of lining that up with the three that watch are probably the mother maiden crone that we need to find somehow apparently they are these huge statues uh, of figurines of if you will uh and then the last two were kind of giving us clues on the keys because in order to get to this place we needed two keys right so we essentially are looking for something related to a dragon and then what we seek the key the changeling holds got so it. apparently we have to find a changeling so you gotta so you gotta so find, yeah <laughs> you gotta find the statues and then find a dragon and a changeling correct Cool. So, 
we did that uh and we were kind of like wow that so that was that was uh pretty pretty crazy um and then we're kind of like okay so we kind of have a little bit of a direction um this is also where i believe it was dar as in a conversation um dara dip kind of did this thing where he kind of dara kind of felt something like he like he had a little bit of a drawing just like something was kind of drawing him somewhere pulling him a little so bit. he kind of left the party while we were debating and he kind of wandered off and there was a fourth door that dara found and it was kind of hidden in the wall um and fourth so we door opened it and seven years ago <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> yes it was a fourth door and when we opened it it opened up into another room obviously with these stairs kind of leading out and we actually see windows on the opposite side and this is the first time we've like seen daylight since we teleported um so that's the direction out however between us and the door is this um very armored uh pretty brutal looking guard if you will (laughs) he's human he's not huge or anything he's not a giant he's he's uh just a a well-armored fellow and we he we did not understand him because he's speaking in the language that is local here um but we do have a wizard and i believe he oh that's right we actually had uh potions of comprehend languages um so we were trying to so we so we were kind of like with a with some persuasion checks, we kind of were able to give him a comprehend language language, and then we took one, and so we were kind of somewhat able to communicate with using that. Uh, we learned that this is actually a warlord <laughs> that was here. That um, we we learned that he he apparently was actually an enemy of Baba Yaga, uh, but he was kind of charmed and dominated by him and or somehow somehow he has a curse placed on him that he guards the hut any intruders that come into the hut he will kill that's essentially his predicament you're coming from further in the hut and so you're not an intruder coming into the hut the correct so that's (laughs) that's where our dilemma kind of happened actually because we were kind of like well we're not intruders we came actually from the inside and he was really confused by that the problem is if we leave and come back to him, we would be intruders. So we're kind of at a little bit of this impasse. You couldn't convince him that that you belonged there while you now, were there. We we did now. From what I remember, I'm trying because of the curse. I think that it was something with the wording of the curse, or we didn't roll well on our persuasion check. I can't quite remember because um, there was also a lot go go like we were trying to convince him and it's kind of a, he was also pretty aggressive from what i remember as well but we were also trying to convince like xaviar and our wizard that not to just kill him because dara and nixia were kind of like he's kind of innocent he's kind of just forced to be here and xaviar and and the wizard were kind of like well we're probably gonna have to fight him anyway and then zav also did he's a, a a wild wild magic barbarian i can't remember what they're called but he has the that, divine uh, well, magic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, see, he has the magical sense, and he oh. senses all the magic items on the dude. And so <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "But loot, guys! <laughs> but loot! It loot. was one of those things." <laughs> but also, if he's got like eight magic items, he's gonna be really hard to kill. <laughs> he's, it's very true. It's very true. So we kind of had a little bit of an impasse even with the party here. Um, We do learn that we can break the curse. We have to find Baba Yaga's cookbook. And in there apparently is a way to break the curse. A cookbook. Um, We'll we'll figure out what happens there. (laughs) A cookbook. So we were able... Recipes. We basically were able... Exactly. Yeah, recipes. Recipes for breaking curses and maybe a lot more in Baba Yaga's cookbook. Um, so before venturing out, we did take a rest here and this was, a uh, our, 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 our barbarian, this, this, I just want to throw this in here for funsies. Our, our barbarian was not really hurt at all. The rest of us needed a rest. And so I remember him like 
going back to the wine room and chugging a bunch of wine. I remember uh, this but too. he also like had to take like we had to make con saves. And every time he most I mean, he's a barbarian, so he's succeeding most of the time. Occasionally he would it would kind of start hurting him and he'd get the grumbles in his tummy. But he it was but, uh, he was so like occasionally he would take some poison damage, but most right. of the time he was passing the checks. So So I I remember I was listening in right towards yes, the end. Yes, I think this you did. Session. I think you did show up here. Um and I just remember dip telling him like it's this weird sensation of like you're getting the booze, but you're also getting this like poison, which is what booze is really anyway. <laughs> And so I mean, if you think about like, it, yeah, <laughs> like you're feeling more and more like, oh, uh, uh, and it's like it kind of feels good because it's not hurting you that much, <laughs> and so he was just using so, it as like just, just it it yeah. honestly <laughs> was just fantastic role play by our barbarian who <laughs> was, was like so funny. He just wanted a drink and he he was love because every time he put the chalice down, it would fill back up. So he was like yep. endless supply. So he was loving it. Um, I do remember at the end of this, we had to go find him because he had like fallen asleep in one of the alcoves or something like yeah. that. Uh, and w- in order to go get them, Dar- like Nixia is like trying to swim across this this water, and apparently it was actually thicker than water. Uh, it was pretty thick and gross, and she started taking damage, and she was like being pulled under. She almost drowned, and so Dara took a drink of the wine. Completely failed his con save. Took took like fifteen poison damage <laughs> or something like that. And so like I role play that Dar just immediately throws up, but like goes over and tries to get them and comes back. And then it's like afterward he's like, "What are you doing?" And and Zav's like, "Well, it's like free free booze." And Dar was like, "That tasted horrible. <laughs> I just took damage. Like <laughs> it I was um, took one drink. A lot of and, shenanigans and." <laughs> evacuated my entire stomach you've been drinking that all night (laughs) yep it was it was absolutely hilarious lots of shenanigans and it was very much a bard and barbarian moment i I just so funny so we do rest here we leave the hut and outside the hut we start kind of venturing forth first place that we've kind of seen it is snow it is snowy here it is cold so it is different from where we left it, from White Throne. Um, I think it's a little bit more mountainy here. But the hut immediately, when we get outside, the hut immediately gets attacked by frost giants. So we start a battle. Oh, oof. and this was actually a really fun moment because the frost giants. Yeah, it was it was pretty rough because they actually they started they they kept coming. First it was like two, and then like next round there was three, and then four, and then five, and. We were kind of like, oh gosh, we're going to get a little overrun here. This could be like a whole small army. We might need to just flee or hop back in the hut or something. But Dip has us all, uh, I would, it was like on the third round or something like that. Because the frost giants actually, some actually just run right past us and start attacking the hut. And Dip has us all put on the boss uh, battle music. Not just normal battle music the boss one and we were like oh gosh what's going on here well we were actually the bosses because what happens is the dancing hut gets involved in the fight which has it's like a cr like oh man like 16 or 17 creature oh my god and he shares the stat block with each of us so it's our turn and then when it's the hut's turn, we went in in the cordons of like, so first it was me, then I believe it was um, Ethan, and then I think it was Ross, and then finally was Nixia. But on each new round of combat, we all got to take a turn playing as the dancing hut, fighting the, fr- the frost giants, as well being us fighting the frost giants. It was really That's fun. Really cool. We were, It was a really fun little moment that Dib did for us. Uh, all got to also see what the dancing hut was capable of. Um, the, the, how it like it, it was really fun to also kind of like do that, but then jump back into our characters because it's like we have no we have no idea what the hut was doing. Like as players, we did, but our characters kind of like, oh god, 
the dancing hut just kind of woke up and just started yeah thrashing going crazy uh ross what he does is that the the dancing hut can do dimension door so it teleported like 40 feet up in the air or something like that and then came crashing down on like three giants so it like teleported up and then just went (laughs) and just smashed a bunch of them doing a bunch bunch of damage it was amazing that's so Um, cool Uh, and we, uh, because of that, it very quickly turned around and we killed the frost giants out of where the frost giants came from. And this is where I will probably end it for today comes, uh, something on four legs and carts starts walking up to us. We soon learn that this is a centaur and it's followed up by other centaurs. We learn that they actually, they did not attack us. We, uh, I believe, I believe these ones, I think how we communicated with them was we spoke Elvish, I think, or Sylvan. Sylvan has kind of been a, a language that some of these creatures talk. And so that's how General we're able baseline, to yeah. talk to some of them. Because I, I, I can speak Sylvan, Dara can, and um, our wizard can as well. So we learned that they were actually tracking the frost giants, seeing what they were doing. Um, because the Frost Giants apparently learned about the Dancing Hut showing up here. And that is where I think I will end for today. And we will come back to uh, what uh, where these, uh, what this conversation leads to. Who are these centaurs? And what is this area? I mean, it's Iberia, but and, and what is, where yeah, are we? Say, like, <laughs> where is that even? And what's happening? <laughs> what's happening? What's going on? Um, but yeah, that was, uh, that's where I will leave it for today. So cool. I love riddles and stuff. It's so good. I love it, stuff like that. It was, it was, it was real fun. I, I remember this was the moment where we were all kind of like oh gosh what are we getting ourselves into like we like we all were pretty like i don't know any what any of this means <laughs> oh no <laughs> i love it uh but we will learn more and the centaurs might be of help to us Hopefully. but we'll see next time when we get back to the backyard tabletop and then back to my side of the story yeah, I mean, next next time we're here, we'll be uh, we'll be talking about my side, and yeah. uh, we'll go into um, well all sorts of things like uh, discovering some strange occurrences during the plague in Old Corvosa, uh, mm-hmm. finding some creatures that we did not expect to find in the middle of the city. Uh, and uh well, I'm looking forward to that. What in the world? Even uh even more interesting little things uh, uh, as well as uh gaining a little bit of PTSD. So we'll, <laughs> we'll see how that goes next time. Oh, Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. We love it. <laughs> well, Curtis, what's the yes. secret word for this episode? The secret word for this uh, the, the, episode this, this is... Bit, 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 no, that's the dips notes. That's the dips notes Oh, thing. sorry. That's not the secret so what, word thing. There is a the secret, secret word thing. It's it's just, is it like it's just whispers? Like, it's a secret. Yeah, it is. It's a secret word. This episode is... Dips notes. is Raven. <gasps> That's a good one. That's a good one. Thank you. That's a good one. Thank you. We also learned that Nixia was not a bird person. She does not like birds. Wow. What a weirdo. <laughs> uh, thank you, everyone. If you made it this far <laughs> in the podcast, Curtis and I very much appreciate you. Uh, we will see you next time. I have been Jake. I've been Curtis. He just said my name a second ago. I did. I really did. Go play Baldur's Gate 3. It's great. It's really good. And let us know. If you if you get it because of listening to this, let us know. Yeah. Tell us who you romance. Yeah. Cool. Get, get into the just get into the details. <laughs> Tell us all about it. Make some make some shenanigan choices. Unless it's a Starian. If it's a Starian, don't say anything because that dude's the worst. The worst. <laughs>
<laughs> you might have people coming coming at at coming Can't at you. Can't stand him. It's funny because Dip is. I think Dip's first character. He's Dip actually playing, playing Starian. Starian. <laughs> I, I was I was very surprised. That's he wants, amazing. He just wants to be a vampire. Thank he you vampire. all. We love you. When are you playing the Dark Urge? Oh, I actually started that tonight. Just to see. Oh, just you made to, a second just, one. Just to try it out, see how it goes. It's very interesting. We'll we'll go over that next time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Uh, bye-bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.